Put new products. Here you go. What are you going to do? I'm just, I have to put it on. So the first, uh, could we start with the um, cap touch? Yeah, so we're going to start with the cap to tet. This is a new new product. Um, you want to go to the overhead? Yeah. So, so this, is, this is a new hat. So I actually, we, we have a video, but I'll, I'll show it on the overhead okay. to start. Okay, let's see if I got my, get my laser mm. going on here. So this is the um, another hat. So every week we're doing a hat for Raspberry Pi. It's kind of like a shield, but for Raspberry Pi, they have yeah. their they have their a mechanical standard. It's like if you fit this mechanical standard, it's be the size. So we've been coming up with a whole bunch of ones. Like we had the Servo One, and we had one with GPS on it, and like all the most popular stuff that people want. So you can plug it into your Raspberry Pi, and then um, the one I'm going to demo today uh, is the capacitive touch one. So it has a capacitive touch chip in the center, and then it has. Um, these weird figure eights coming out, and those are the electrodes. And um, I have it hooked up right now. Oh, I have it. I will. I'll get it ready. But I have it hooked up um, to a speaker. And let me log in and start this script. Okay. Um, whatever you. Uh, hold on. Do you want me to play the video of it? Yeah. Why don't you play the script by the video while I. Okay. Log in. While you do that, I have a little video that I wanted to show folks, and this is the video of. Lady Ada playing the um, cap touch hat. Let me just find it. Do, do, do. Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Here it is. Merry Christmas. It's Lady Ada on the musical conductive hat. Fruit drums. Fruit drums. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to uh, stick to the engineering. <laughs> um, so, sorry, I was just uh, getting my, my Python script running. But uh, so, in this demo, I, I just have fruit connected to it because you can connect anything that's kind of damp or metallic or anything that can conduct even a little bit of electricity. But I'm just going to touch it directly with my finger. So, can we go to the overhead? Yeah. Sorry awesome. about that. Now, now I'm totally set. And now the speaker, and I'm going to put it near my mic so you guys can definitely hear it. But. Nice. So, this is the code for the. Um, Things. I, can, I can also have a, a band. Uh, okay, lady in a band. band. Um, so as you touch each one, it can detect it. And then if you're in this example script, I have it plays a sound, but it doesn't have to. It can actually do anything. It's just It just detects a touch, and then you can have your Python code um, play video, or go to a website, or turn off a light, or whatever you want. Um, it's just fun to demo with the sound, because it's just like so easy. And um, <clears throat> and it's like, capacitive, not resistive. That's right, it's capacitive. So you have to, you have, to have a human. Um, and you can't be wearing gloves, it has to be like your hand, or if you have those special gloves with the metal tip, that, that works too. Basically anything that, like an iPhone, like you use, or you can use those capacitive styluses. Um, but if you use alligator clips, um, what's nice is that you can connect to the, um, you can clip the alligator in so it, it grabs the two circles, and then you can, well, you can um, attach the other end to like fruit or metal or ITO. Or whatever you like, so okay. it allows you to have like basically. I want to make it so you can clip alligator clips. That's why you have that weird figure yeah. shape. So this is why you can clip to it. Yeah, because people are like, why the heck is that weird shape? Yeah. Uh, and then and if you want to solder, you can solder to the hole in the middle. So that's a capacitive touch hat. So we'll have more hats, but that's this week's hat. And uh, we have um, a really cool animated GIF of Becky <coughs> playing fruit drums. Okay. <laughs> so All right. Time for fruit. Next uh, right. big announcement. This is the. Lulzbot Mini. It's the next in the line of open source 3D printers. We have the coming soon page. We're allowed to announce that um, it's uh, coming out. So sign up. Sign up. They'll probably go pretty fast. Um, it's one of our popular 3D printers, and made a big splash at CES. Yeah. Oh, you were there? No. It's, no. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No. I don't think we're allowed to go there, mostly because something you made. Yeah. For the. Yeah. For those we of. We weren't banned. No. <laughs> No. Technically, technically, it wasn't yeah. us. So I guess they one. Can't prove it. I guess one side note for the folks who don't know this. So um, we had just came out with a new version of the high power TV be gone, and I soldered up five and I sent it to um, my friends who were at Gizmodo at the time, and they all were in uh, Vegas for CES, and they decided to. Um, um, well, Test let me it. just let me just back up a little bit. <laughs> um, a lot of people were complaining that that year CES was. Man, there's nothing really new and exciting. It's just a bunch of TVs. I wish someone would do something about this. Well, then the next day something did happen. And so um, they used all the TV begons to shut off every single TV at CES. They filmed it. They put up a video. And one of the people from Gizmodo got banned for life. Um, <laughs> it was an interesting couple of weeks. Um, 
boy, did people want to get TV Be Gone. Yeah, yeah, that little two-minute <laughs> video. Or kill us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it was he, an interesting he's a guy who uh, who is kind of the brunt of all that. He, he I emailed him and he said, uh, you know, I'm j I just work for them. It doesn't yeah. Matter. He's like, I don't care. Like, it's yeah. Thing. So, anyways, um, it was an interesting day in the world of consumer electronics. Um, next up, uh, our R is for robots coloring book is probably going to be in the store in a few days. We went through the alphabet and we did A is for Asimov, H is for Hexpod, G is for GPS. W is for Wildcat, That's X really is nice for art. x rex we had Ooh, N is for nanotechnology, color. we had P is for prosthetic, we have uh, J is for Jacquard Loom, and this is um, the second coloring book that we've done here at Adafruit. The first one was Lady Ada's E is for Electronics, A through Z of Electronics. This one is R is for Robots, and as always, we are releasing this as a Creative Commons download for free. You can print these out, Yay. give these to kids. Yay. You can um, make them and distribute them. you get a coloring book and then everyone wants to color in like H is for hexapod, and then you're like, man, I only have one H for hexapod. <clears throat> you can make a, a book with 25 H is for hexapods, and then like one for S's yeah. self driving car. So, um, <laughs> so it's it's meant for um, people of all ages to just look at robots, and um, you know, one thing that I think that we can all do a better job on is robots can be friends. They just don't need to be, um, you know, what like Terminator says they're going to be. Mm. Um, they can be our, our friends with the software we write. Eventually, if they become self-aware, we have to be very careful that we make sure that we put our best in them, not our worst. Yeah. And so my favorite story is when um, I uh, was working with the people at Sony and they had these little humanoid robots called yeah. Curio. And one of the older engineers, he said, make sure you make robot friend, not robot enemy. Yeah. And it really hit me because I was like, oh my God, because the, their robot, um, it would only read to children. It wouldn't do, um, it wouldn't, he said, don't make robot slave. Yeah. Very powerful. Like just see that, wow, like we may have to think about what we put into these robots one day. And especially if they're going to do very important or dangerous things or whatever. So anyways, um, we're starting them very young and we're trying to teach uh, kids about robots in uh, more than just what Hollywood says is going to happen and more than, you know, everybody else out there. More than the military. <laughs> yeah. So that's our, that's our plan. So you only have fun robots in here. Yeah. Friendly so robots. next yeah. up, getting started with Arduino. There's a new update. We have it in the store. Just some more text and stuff and updates more, for More, more, more. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's gotten to be quite a book. So if... If you want to learn Arduino, this is like the book by the definitive source. I Next guess. up, we have a special companion kit for Sylvia's Super Awesome Project Book, Volume 2. It's an Arduino pack that goes along with it. You can do all the projects. And yeah, we actually oh, cool. we actually use all these parts to go through all the projects, <clears throat> so we know for sure that it works. Yeah. You get a speaker, you get an Arduino, you get a USB cable, you get three ultra bright white LEDs, so you can do the, um, the pulse effect ones, uh, a potentiometer with wires soldered onto it, and a genuine Arduino and 9 volt battery pack. So you will definitely be ready to go and it works perfectly with Arduino software. So after you finished Sylvia's beginner book, you can move yeah. on to the introduction to Arduino book or something. Okay, and next up, we won't spend a lot of time on these, but basically we have these new types of filament. There's ones that are, uh, re there's copper, yeah, there's copper and bronze. Bronze. Just kind of copper. -y. And this actually does have metal particles in it. Yes. Yeah. And they yeah. answer the question at a time. It's not conductive, um, but oh, it, it is metal, cool. and it feels like metal, and they said it smells like metal. And then last up, we also have glow in the dark. That's fun. Ooh. Yeah. It's a lot, of, a lot of fun. Yeah, and we'll be sh having more. Uh, it's actually, if you check in tomorrow, if you're watching on live, um, 3D Hangouts with Noah and Pedro, they <clears> will um, show off. We, they showed off on the um, uh, show and tell some stuff that they printed out with the copper and bronze filament. It looks and it looks like it's a cast piece. You know, especially if you do finishing, like they tumbled it yeah. with some um, yeah. like hex nuts or <clears> something <throat> to, to, to kind of ding it a little bit to give it a much smoother finish. They say after tumbled it like it looks pretty much cast. Like it's yeah. as good as something you would buy. Okay, Lady Ada, nice. we have a pack of Neopixels. They're not Neopixels, they're dot stars. Dot stars, sorry. Dot stars. This is I, um, <clears throat> uh, <sighs> really screwed that one up, you sorry. You totally, you're fired. No, I know. These are a, a 10 pack of APA 102s, which is kind of the next generation of, um, of all in one LED chips. These ones have a, a two wire SPI protocol, so you give them power and ground, and then data clock in and data clock out. Um, and they, they act a lot like NeoPixels, but you don't have to worry about timing requirements. And I can show this on the overhead real fast, too. Okay. I soldered them onto um, little uh, 5050 LED breakouts here. 
Um, and they're, they're as bright as like NeoPixels, so if you're used to that. But because there's no timing requirements, you can use it with any processor because you don't have to worry about this like pulse high, pulse low. You can go as fast or slow as you want, works perfectly with Raspberry Pi, any pins, BeagleBone, basic stamp, any, any processor will work just fine as long as you have two pins available. And um, they look really great and they're really easy to use in like 24-bit color. So if you want something that's a little bit more uh, stable than NeoPixels and not as uh, picky, um, Dot Stars are like basically the same price and, and are really good quality and look great. Okay. Next up, we have an update of the Hummingbird kits. Yeah, this is the Hummingbird Duo. It now comes with even more stuff. And this is a um, basically a DIY robotics pack that has no soldering required. So if you want to make interactive art, uh, it has like every kind of servo, DC motor, like multiples of each one, sensors, and they're all wired together and ready to go. So you can just like plug and play. You don't have to um, solder anything. You don't really have, even have to know anything about robotics. It's, it's designed for, for beginners, and it's very comprehensive. And I believe it's even Arduino compatible, although let me see if I can look at it. It comes with a brain board. Um, called the Hummingbird Brain, <clears throat> and then let me check. Yeah, it's Arduino at heart, and it yeah. has, um, it's an Atmega 324, so it's basically like a Leonardo um, Arduino, but it, uh, and developed by Carnegie Mellon, but you know, you can basically build all these um, cool sensors and, and robot projects with it. So check it out, great for um, educators, or if you, if you okay. want to have a bunch of people build a robot and they don't have any tools. And next up we have, um, this is the Black Hat, Hacker. From Primarani. Right? No, sorry. Yeah, it's Yeah, it's right. Oh, sorry, Primarani. That's right. Yeah, they put like Japanese characters on Yeah, for one second, I'm like, oh my god, no, I got it wrong. No, okay. Uh, so what does this do, Lady Ada? This is a, uh, it's a mini kit, so you have to solder it together. It comes with a bunch of parts, and it basically breaks out the GPIO for a Raspberry Pi B plus or A plus twice. So you can plug it into your Pi, and then you can put a hat onto it, so if you're developing a hat, and then you can still probe all the pins. So it's really handy if you're debugging um, a, a Raspberry Pi hat, you're developing one, and you want to still be able to get to all the pins without having to, like, you can, like, have other wires, and especially if the hat uses all the pins. So they use this internally for developing um, their products, but they're like, hey, you know, it might be handy for other people. So they cleaned it up a little bit and released it as a kit. Okay. And that's it. And all that is our new products for the week.